Hi, I'm Mike. I'm with Utastic here at Chicago WebConf. I'm sitting down with Andy Luster. Uh, you might have used some of his tools, uh, www.mechanize or ACK. Uh, he's also uh, formerly ran the uh, Chicago Perlmongers out in the suburbs. He's written quite a bit about job hunting and how to be a good citizen inside of uh, the open source community. Thank you for uh, sitting down with me, Andy. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what your experience has been working with ACK and Mechanize and, and all the other tools that you've created and kind of put out there? Uh, sure. My Most of what I do is, like most, a lot of open source projects, is scratching an itch. Mm -hmm. Something like ACK scratched the itch of me needing to search through a code base that was both with multiple different languages together and I needed an easy way to filter out certain languages. Mm -hmm. I scratched that itch and it grew from there. Mm -hmm. Something like www.mechanize, the Pro module, uh, started from we needed a way to do automated testing of web pages, make mm -hmm. sure that logins worked and didn't work in the proper way. Uh, found an existing module, forked that off, and grew that. Mm -hmm. But what's great about that about that model is once you start the original itch, and once you talk about it, and once you start talking about, hey, here's something that I've done, and a lot of people, I don't think, talk about their projects mm -hmm. enough. When other people start to use it, it, the role of me as a maintainer has, will, in most of my projects, has gone from the original creator to shepherd of mm -hmm. the ongoing maintenance. So something like ACK, people add features or Mechanize, I've probably written maybe a third of Mechanize. Right. And the other two thirds are all things that have come from the community. So it's more of the vision. You become more of like a product manager at a certain point. At some point, yeah, I, I do. And uh, part of that also comes to where you need to hand that off to other people. So for instance, Mechanize, I've handed off because I, I've not been able to do the maintenance on it that I need to do, right. put the time into it. And there are other people who have those, have the skill, have the time, and so now uh, that's going to be part of the core Perl uh, LWP mm -hmm. core module. So this is actually going to be part of Perl itself. Not of well, but not of Perl, but of the LWP, which is pretty common. Okay. At, at, on most is that like your standard lib? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's one. Of, it's one of the standard libraries, and so that kind of ongoing maintenance you can pass off. I said, hey, you know what? I'm not able to put all the time into it. Mm -hmm. uh, it. Also, there were issues that I was not qualified to deal with. Mm -hmm. I, I'm horrible at internationalization. I don't understand the issues that, that right. go into dealing with all the different kinds of character sets. Uh, and so when I handed that off to Jesse Vincent, who does a lot of work across multiple uh, character sets, I mean, he does a lot of stuff with uh, Asian languages, I know. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, he's he's going to know how to deal with this. I handed it off to him. So it, it is product, like project management or product management. And uh, it, it's, and I try not to be, you know, to, in some extent, I have to be the benevolent dictator, but I also have to bring people in. I have to encourage other people to, to contribute. So it's not just, not just about product, it's about encouraging um, fostering a sense of you, you, that you're, you're bringing something to the table, even if it's, I, I know you were trying to get somebody to uh, generate an ASCII art for um, for the Kathy, for the right, ACK. Right, right. Uh, because uh, in America, the, the character uh, Kathy says ACK, um, and she wants chocolate. <laughs> right, <laughs> and know? it's just a silly thing. Yeah. It's just a silly thing, but there's so many ways that we can contribute. One of the things that I try to that I try to talk about whenever I can is that there are so many ways we contribute to open source. I wrote an article called 14 Ways to Contribute to Open Source Without mm -hmm. Being a Rock Star. If you go Google it, you'll find it. And, and the point is that not, you don't have to be one of these huge brains. You don't have to be a DHH or a Larry Wall or one of these guys who just has fantastic vision and coding chops. Because mm -hmm. I'm not that guy. Right. I, I just... But I try to contribute where I can, and everybody has a way that they can contribute, whether that's whether that's uh, fixing a bug, whether that's just verifying a bug in the code tr in the bug tracker, 
or saying, well, you know what, this happens on my machine and it's different on this other machine. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that can make a world of difference when it comes to development. And so one of the things I try to talk about is how you don't have to be this a rock star. Everybody can contribute in some way. You don't have to devote hours and hours and hours every week, mm -hmm. but just every little bit that you can do helps. And, and I try to think, I, I talk about uh, how open source is kind of a quilt. And some people add big squares to the quilt, mm -hmm. and some people add little squares to the quilt. But everything is just little stitches. Right. And every little stitch that you can add helps the entire community, the entire project, helps the understanding of open source and why open source is so important to what we do in computing. Yeah, and and it also goes beyond just um, um, code contributions. Uh, you know, you you do the Bobby Tables mm -hmm. and the, the Perl, but uh, right, BobbyTables.com is a great example because uh, I. I read Stack Overflow all the time. Mm -hmm. StackOverflow.com, it's a question and answer question. And so many questions, so many questions were people coming and saying, well, how do I get around SQL injection? Mm -hmm. and, and of course, Bobby Tables is a reference to an XKCD cartoon mm -hmm. about SQL injection. And people understood that, and, but they didn't really have, a lot of these newbies were coming in and didn't understand all the issues. Right. And I, f I found myself getting so tired of saying the same thing over and over again that I just set up a website. And what I did though is I just scraped all the answers from on everywhere on Stack Overflow. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just took the best answers of everything and just put it on a website. So then I can just make it super simple mm -hmm. to make the barriers to, to helping somebody so low. And just say, go to bobbytables.com and there's the answer for you. Yeah, and and the, I think the important differentiation of what you did and some of the other scrapers is they're mostly trying to get click-throughs. You're mm -hmm. just trying to catalog and make these common answers yeah. more accessible. Uh, and is this something that like somebody could just go and contribute directly to an answer to? Well, and that's the other beautiful thing is that the source code for Bobby Tables is on GitHub. Okay. So anybody can go and fork the code on GitHub. Uh, make a patch and send me a request and send me a pull request. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about that is that now there's a German translation oh. of BobbyTables.com. So more internationalization. More in right, which I have no idea. Yeah. I don't. I don't know German, but there's now a German translation. Uh, there's a Russian translation, and it's all hosted on Bobby Tables. So the guy who came along and said, "I'd like to do the German translation," set up the code for me and did a lot of the translation. But now I have this framework. Right. So when the guy came along who wanted to do the Russian translation, just added a added yeah. a language to it, and now he's able to contribute. That's one of the beautiful things that GitHub has done is that they've made the barrier so low. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to fork things to to make to make comments on on, uh, on issues in the issues database, mm -hmm. where. The, it's so simple to do contributions. Yeah, yeah and, and and that's the, that's the converse to what um, uh, Linus was saying about uh, his frustrations with Linux is they have very high, like, in order to contribute to Linux, it's an extremely high threshold sure. to be able to contribute to right. the to the core. But for most projects, you would just need you need help. You right. just need somebody to help. You just need little so, bits of stuff. Yeah. Right. And just you know, and and that applies everywhere. That applies whether it's uh, running a user group meeting, you know, you come in and you make coffee, right? And anybody can do that, and it's simple. Or you clean up afterwards so that you know your sponsors don't find a mess. That right? It, it sounds so. It sounds so small, right. but it's not. It because every one of those is a little stitch in the quilt. Yeah, I can. I cannot say how much I appreciate it at, at, at SCMC. Uh, software craftsmanship in McHenry County. I don't often plug McHen my own group. McHenry County represent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the MC. Um, but uh, turning around and seeing that the people who came had already cleaned up all their own mm -hmm. stuff. And sure. I don't have to run around chasing it. And so I can talk to people and make newbies uh, to the group feel more comfortable sure. and welcome. It's, it's, and it's, so it's all part of uh, an ecosystem. 
Yeah. You know, that when you pick up your own plates, I can talk to somebody who's there for the first time and make them feel more comfortable so that way they'll right. come and then we get bigger and we get bigger and, and, and it, it, it has to be it has to be ongoing because so much of what we do um, is you know we, we think of we sit here and we're in awe of these great technical brains mm -hmm. that do amazing things and yet there's so much other things that need to get done and they're not any worse it's not like they you know they might not have the glamour but they're still just as important so on the parrot project for instance Parrot is the uh, virtual machine that is underpinning Rakuto Perl, which is the main implementation of Perl 6. Mm -hmm. So there's an entire virtual machine uh, that there's some incredible brain power going into creating a virtual machine. And that's way beyond my pay grade. I don't right. know. I, I, that's way beyond me. I don't understand. I, you know, sitting here comparing garbage collection algorithms. That's not. That's not. That's not that's like my your, thing. Your bag. Right. Yeah. Right. But I can do. But what we do have is what's called the parrot cage cleaners, mm -hmm. and the parrot cage cleaners are the are the guys who go and uh, they might look at a test part of the test. So we can go. Oh, this is this is redundant to this other test here. We'll go and remove it. Or we'll find uh, some code that for some reason is indented incorrectly, or a comment that's out of date. Mm -hmm. All, or we'll go look in the in the uh, the uh, ticket queue mm -hmm. and go clean stuff up. Jim Keenan out in New York is amazing. The the number uh, some days there'll just be a dozen closed tickets where Jim has gone through and said, "Oh, this is fixed. This is fixed. This is yeah. fixed." Six months ago and help clean those up. Yeah. All that kind of scut work is absolutely crucial and that to, helps to successful projects. The people who are building the core not have to have a mess, not have to, so that way they can produce the thing which feeds back right. into the people who are using it. Right. So when you're using it, you pay for it by helping do some of the scuttle work and then it, it feeds back and becomes a cycle. Absolutely, absolutely. Everything that we do Anything that you do that helps an open source project mm -hmm. is is valuable. Even just talking about it, mm -hmm. you sit here and you write a blog post about, hey, look, I found this project. You know, I, I, I found, you know, this foo project that I that saved me an hour on something that I was mm -hmm. doing. Save, spend 10, 15 minutes writing that in your blog, mm -hmm. and or tweeting about it, or posting it to Facebook, or whatever it may be. And tell people about it, mm -hmm. because otherwise people don't know about it. Right. And you know, one of, one of the things I, it's funny because I have people come up to me at conferences sometime, and they kind of go, I, I, you know, I'll say, well, tell me about what you do, and they go, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not as famous as you. And I say, the only reason I'm famous is because I have a big mouth, right? And I talk about these things. I'm not any smarter than you are. I'm not any better programmer than you are. I just talk a lot. Yeah. And and hey, here we are now. Yeah. Um, so that kind of, we, we one of the things that that geeks tend to not do mm -hmm. is they don't like to talk about themselves. They don't like to brag. Yeah. They don't like to and, and that's not just a geek thing. People in general don't like to. And that's one of the problems of course that that they have when it comes to job interviews because they don't like to talk about what they've done. Mm -hmm. They don't like to brag. But part of this is we need to brag. Not that we're bragging about how cool we are that we did this, but that this is useful. So something like ACK, I talk about ACK not because I want people to somehow, you know, adulate me, mm -hmm. but that I want people to use it because I think it's helpful. I want right. people to find useful things. So, and now, you know, so ACK, ACK has a website called the ACK website is called betterthangrep.com right. because I wanted people to have other things that are better than grep for searching source code. And there's actually a page on there where I talk about other kinds of tools that are there. Yeah. And now, so now, somebody has come along with a website called betterthanack.com, uh, building on top of that. Yeah. And I couldn't be more delighted. Right. I love that we build off of each other. That and you know it's not competition. It's not. It's not like you know. You're going to take are, away my, my, my earnings. Right. By taking some. That's right. that's it, one of the tricks with paid software is is 
you know, the collaboration is, uh, is desired with a competitor because they're going to be taking away your, your profit. Right. Whereas when it's open source, it's just, hey, you just made something better. Hey, right. now I can use it. Now my life is better. It's the difference between a scarcity mentality and an abundance mentality. Scarcity mentality thinks that everything's a zero-sum game, whether it's adulation or love or time or everything is just zero-sum. And an abundance mentality says that the more people that come in, the more we have, the more we have to give. And so that's why I want to bring in as many people as I can to work on open source, to use it. Even if you just use it, that's great, because that helps all of us. So that, that's, that's my philosophy behind it. Okay, and just to, to kind of bring us to an end, with, you, with your talks and your writing about um, finding jobs, mm -hmm. do you mention it all, or do you have any experience on using um, user groups and conferences to help find jobs? Well, actually, that's funny because I, I also wrote, an, I just wrote another article on leveraging, I believe it's called leveraging your open source experience in the job hunt, where right. I talk about, uh, where I, I, you really didn't know this in, in the yeah, softball? No, 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 that one actually, I didn't, I didn't know this one. <laughs> okay, well, you, it's a great softball. Because uh, <laughs> I talk about how these are all contacts. Okay. People that we know day to day, that we know are, are colleagues in open source help us when we're trying to find other jobs. Mm -hmm. um, they help, uh, the, and we can use our open source experience on our resumes right. because it is work experience. W work experience on your resume doesn't have to be paid. Right. And so, just as if you organized, you know, say you organized your kids' baseball league, mm -hmm. that's worthwhile to put on your resume because, and you can tie it into a business need. Absolutely, the things you do in open source should go on your resume. Should and and you can talk about that and say, hey, look, you know what? These are the things that I've done on this project. So, for instance, on my resume, I talk about the Parrot project mm -hmm. and about how I've gone through and done these sorts of cleanup things, about how I instrument the code mm -hmm. for uh, doing static analysis, and I and I treat it as if it's a project that I got paid for. Right. I didn't, but in the eyes of the reader. That's still valuable work experience, right. and it's it's different collateral. It's yes, in a way, in a way you do get paid by, but it's not through money. Right, it's it's through recognition, through use, through recognition and gratitude, contributing back. Right, and recognition and gratitude are the are the currency of what we do, and so the other thing I like to say is that we need to thank each other more. We need to recognize each other more. We need to. You know, if not only should if you get some, if you find this tool that saves you a couple of hours of work, not only should you write a blog post about it, but you should send mail to somebody and yeah. say, "Hey, you know what? I just used this. It saved me an hour, and I want to thank you for it." And yeah. that one minute, I can't even tell you how much that means to, to let software you know you're authors. Not in isolation, isolation right. yelling out into the dark void. Right, that people are actually using this and appreciate it. That is absolute gold. You want to sit here and encourage open source? You want to ins encourage people to write these tools? Encourage them directly by letting them know. And, that, and, and just you know, the last thing is that I, I, what, what you're saying is I have a friend, uh, who Igor Polovoy, who I will interview, um, who does several Java projects. And every time he would get something, I work with him at, at Groupon, um, every time he would get an email or some kind of contact saying, somebody used my project and they have 20 million records in their database and they're using it, they said, it's no yeah. problem. The sense of, of f the good feeling you could just see coming from him yep. was you know, he'd done this thing to scratch his own niche, but somebody else got used from it. He didn't, th he's not thinking about, oh, I should have charged for that. He's thinking, that's really great. And, and it's funny. It's a very different mindset. It is, and it's funny because our day jobs don't pay us in that. Mm -hmm. you, it's not often, you know. Sometimes at the end of a big project, upper management will say, "Hey, look, we're going to and bring in a couple dozen pizzas, and everybody has pizzas in yeah. the lunchroom." And thanks for God, you know, for a job well done. And yeah. that's kind of gratitude, yeah. but not the same as an email from somebody who goes, "I just discovered your your website, and it saved me." X amount of time and and it made my life so much easier. Thank you for doing that. And so we all we all owe it to the other authors mm -hmm. to open source 
to, to help encourage that. And that's, that just comes back. That's just paying it forward because it's going to come back for everything that we've done. Well, thank you very much for taking the time Thanks, to spend with me. Thanks. I appreciate it.